Hey folks, we're going to change gears a little bit here and we're going to do a processing tip rather than a gear tip. Uh, this is going to be a little bit longer than my other videos just because there's a little bit more explanation involved. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is how I've kind of found a workaround, especially in Pix Insight, on how to calibrate more than one night set of images all in the same weighted batch pre-processing workflow. Um, and this is really helpful if you shoot with a DSLR where you're shooting darks every night because WBP doesn't allow you necessarily to add filters and things like that like other designators in order to separate your darks by night it it kind of uh, assumes an astro camera where as long as you're at the right temperature um, you know your darks are applicable to all your frames so it's a little bit harder to segment them um, but there's some some workarounds this may not be the best way it may not be the right way but it's the way i found to do it uh, so i use uh, an astro camera with an asi or pro which doesn't support certain naming uh, for your different calibration frames, in particular your darks and flat darks, because they're taken as darks. So you can't add a filter tag automatically to them. The targeting list doesn't quite work because they're darks. And I'll explain all that in a minute. Um, but what we want to do is an easy way to separate all our calibration frames out so we can put our multi nights into the same process, calibrate them, align and stack them, or register them and stack them and have everything work smoothly. Um, so if you've got a better way to do this or you know uh, uh, there's some sort of flaw in how I'm doing it that I don't know about, uh, please do let me know in the comments and if this helps you let me know as well. Uh, so on the screen right now is my most recent image. It was shoot, shot in really poor conditions but it's an example of three nights of shooting with different filters. Uh, the first night the moon wasn't really out so I shot it with an, a UVIR cut filter and the moon came out a little bit, shot it with an L Pro. And then the moon was a lot bigger, so I shot with a, um, I think it was a, a L Extreme. So anyway, I got multiple filters, multiple nights, and I had to get all of that calibration set up together. So without further ado, um, what we'll do is we're going to go through uh, the most common applications that folks use just to show how easy it is and how we have to kind of work around that in Pix Insight. So starting out with Deep Sky Stacker, it's actually really easy. So you. A full tutorial for Deep Sky Stacker is outside the scope of this video, um, but you basically go through that list on the left and start adding in your, your frames. So here's some example frames. But once I add them, if you notice, this grouping tab on the bottom left added another group as, for, as soon as I added frames. So if I add some more lights, you get another group. So basically you can use these groupings to isolate each night, you can go through and add every single set of files that you have in order to do your calibration. And Deep Sky Stacker will calibrate them all independently and then register and stack them all to the same image. Very simple. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's some knobs you can move in here. Uh, a lot of people use Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, I've used it uh, on occasion, particularly when I was first starting out. Um, but now I use other applications and some of them are similar and some of them aren't. So that's that's really easy to group them up. So let's move on to Astro Pixel Processor. So APP in its kind of UI and the workflow allows you to easily uh, add multiple filters or multiple sessions or multiple nights. And the, the session is kind of the, the idea around each different night. So on the left here, when you're doing your uh, loading of your frames, you have two tick boxes here for multi-channel or multi-filter processing and then multi-session. So if you have those two ticked, it'll actually ask you the question of how to group them as you add those frames. So let's add our frames in here. Okay, so the first thing it does, it asks us which filter we use. And it's got some of the common ones here. You got LRGB, you got H-alpha, H-beta, sulfur, oxygen, etc. So you can actually add your own. Let's say I shot this with uh, an L Pro. I type L Pro in there, click OK, and then choose the session for your frames and use this as your night of shooting. So session one, OK, go. So on the bottom left here, you can see it has L Pro, session one, problem. So let's add some more lights, more lights. OK. Now it's going to ask me again. And the cool thing about APP is it remembers that you entered an L Pro and gives that to you as a tick box, op, op, tick box option. You don't have to add it every single time. 
So we can click L Pro or we can add something else in there. Let's say this was the L Extreme. Okay, session two. Okay, and we're off to the races. As we scroll down, we see this is shot with the L Extreme, that's session two. So every frame that you add will offer you the option to align them to, particularly your flats, you wanna do that. Uh, you align them to your which session you shot, which filter they apply to, and it'll group them all accordingly. So on the darks though, it will say, do you wanna apply this to all sessions? So if you use the same camera at the same temperature, uh, you can apply it to all sessions or you can individually select them. So let's say you use two different cameras or maybe one night you shot at minus 10, the other night you shot at minus zero because a little bit it was a little bit warmer. Um, that's okay. Uh, same thing with your dark frames if you're using a DSLR, right? So I shot my dark frames every time I did imaging because they are temperature sensitive. So you can apply those to each night just like you would anything else. So it's very simple. It's built into the workflow, no problem. So exiting out of there, we go into the tougher one, which is PixInsight. So PixInsight uses a lot the fits headers to pull out keywords in, in order to group the frames. Um, so you want to use weighted batch pre-processing because that's the easiest way to get all your stuff kind of in the same place and do it all at once. So one of the tricks that I found, uh, you know, I can't recommend Adam Block's videos enough. If you haven't taken his courses or watched his videos, they're very thorough, they're very in-depth. Um, but one thing I noticed that when he was going over the new version of weighted batch pre-processing, the keyword identifiers he was using for multi-night processing were in the file name. So what I was doing was I was I had a Python script and then I decided to start using another third-party program to rename all my files to have that session in them. Or like I, I used a, a workaround in the, the ASIR Pro to add a, a tag to my target file naming convention. So um, that I was using that essentially as like mocking the filter so that uh, weighted batch pre-processing would select them out, but that doesn't work for your darks. So especially again for your DSLR folks, your darks are going to be nightly. So you have to, they can't be isolated by filters because of the way the workflow works in WBPP. So I'll talk about the two different situations first. Um, you can always use the add custom, which is where you add your files. You can assign what type of image type they are. Let's say they're flats. You can add a filter name and this is completely optional. You can do that for each one of your frames and WBP will separate them based on the filter. You can do that, but it, again, it doesn't work for the darks. Um, so that kind of throws a wrench in the whole works if you're using a DSLR because you're shooting darks every night. So that was one of the ways I was doing it. And that, that doesn't really work, but um, by accident, I figured out that PixInsight keeps references to the full path of your files in a lot of the stuff that it does. So one time I was working with some integration and I moved some files around, not really think of any, thinking of it doing some organization. And then it quit, basically it quit working because it kept the full references um, to each one of those file paths. So that gave me a hunch. So with the new directory feature, I can actually add, what I did was I, I keep, and this is a good time to talk about it, I keep all my files in their own folders. So every night I shoot my lights, I shoot flats, and I flat shoot flat darks. So I use those flat darks as my bias frames for my flats. So I shoot those every, every single session, and I keep them organized in a file. And I figured out because PixInsight will parse file names and it seems to be file paths, with that full pass and it's looking for underscore keyword value. And it, it kind of pulls those out just because of the way uh, files get named and it may be just be the way that they programmed it. Um, so I can actually put those keywords into the folder names. So I have my each night I have labeled as session N1, N2, N3. I can select that folder. It's gonna find all my images. I'll add another directory. Two. On all those, add another. My three nights of shooting of M16. Okay, so you notice what it did was it grouped all the 240 second frames together. You see there's 77 here and 19 here. And then I have 30 of three different flat darks. 
So those are each night of shooting, but they're not associated to each other. So some of my images, when, I, when I'm talking about my 90 flats that are all the same, I didn't shoot 90 flats in, in one night, I shot 30 each night. So they're not segmented, but I can use those keywords. So I add session here, hit the plus sign. So now everything's grouped up together because now WBPP is looking for that keyword, which is again, separated by the underscores, session underscore value. So now everything's separ separated properly. Now this is throwing me some warning because I don't have darks in here, that's fine. But it shows how I do my multi-night. So every I basically organize my file folders with those, everything in there with the session keyword in the directory and it'll parse them out just fine. The only problem is if you use a DSLR, this directory function doesn't work. So I'm gonna exit this because I don't wanna change any of my settings because if you reset, it resets everything. So I'll open WBP BPP up again. So and I'll go to directory and what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna pick a DSLR example that I already have, like session one. So I pick this and it doesn't find any of the, the frames. But I know that they're there. So let me try it again. Go in my DSLR example, session one. I got my darks, flats, and lights, but I can't find anything right there. It's it's just the way that the um, the script is working in order to find those files, right? So and and again, I know they're there. So like if I go to that this example, one lights. I know these files are in here. Right? They're they're there. So what I can do is as a workaround you can use either you do some scripting or i use this thing called bulk rename utility and i'll put the 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 link to this below um, but essentially what it does is allows you to uh, have some flexibility with how you rename your files so i have very standard dsa dsc nikon numbering here what i can do is i can add that key underscore keyword underscore value into my file names so then it's the WBPP has something to latch onto for that session identifier. So what I can do is I can have my prefix session underscore N1 underscore because I need to append it. I'm gonna put it on the front of the file name. And when I select all these, it shows my new name is session N1 and then the, you know, the, the original name of the file. Um, so what I can do is I can click rename so it's renamed all those files, files to add the session identifier. And what I can do is I'm going to take this keyword off because it was persistent and add my lights, DSLR example, session one, just to show you the full thing. Goes in there. So they're named that way, but it also shows no filter and no designator. Add my flats. I've already renamed these just for, just for speed. Add my darks. So now they're all there and they're probably, they're gonna be linked together because those are the only files, but I can still group them together with that keyword. Okay. So now it recognized that session keyword and has them segmented by my designator, which is night one, night two, night three. So that works. So I've test, I tested this before, everything works just fine. So if I wanna go back and process some of my older images, cause I've gotten a little bit better at processing, I can pull those out of the archive, rename them quickly with the batch renamer, and then use PixInsight to do the stacking. So a lot of people have compared the registration, stacking, and calibration of all the different applications. I prefer to just do everything in PixInsight, but it made it hard just because of the way it, it deals with raw files, etc. So if you use a, a, an application or you use an ASIR Pro that doesn't allow you to add a target or you know modify the filter names at all, this is particularly helpful. So you have the bulk renaming you can have, uh, if you're using FITS files for some reason, the directory thing works. Um, but if that doesn't work, you can just use the renamer and, and put some of those keywords in there. Um, and it works just fine. Um, so that's, um, that's kind of all I had for today. Friday afternoon, I kind of felt like making, making a video and, and this was a good topic. So if there's a better way to do this, please let me know. If this helps you, please let me know also. 
And uh, I hope to see you again next time. So until then, good luck and clear skies.